Don and Carrie ann Fitzgerald have been running seaweed discovery workshops, tastings and tours since 2009. And I'm going to head off now with John to find out about these nutritional superfoods. What have we here? So right here, Mary, is what's known as a shell maiden. Maiden is a fancy name for a dump or a pit. So the original settlers Gosh. would have lived by the coast, burrowed into the dunes um, that surround us mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. like rabbits essentially, and their diet would have been seaweeds and shellfish, which we are all readily available every day of the year. So you see what we have? These dunes would have come right out all the way across, and with the time they've been eroded, mm -hmm. we expose this here. This is listed. So is this like their dustbin? This is their du um, their dumping kit. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they would have sat around here discussing the game, <laughs> throwing their empties <laughs> into this into the middle. <laughs> so what you've got here is you've got limpets, oh. periwinkles, you've dog welts, um, you've native oysters, cockles, clams, um, scallops. Wow. There's an oyster shell there. And so how long would that have been there? This is listed in the National Monuments as an archaeological find. They haven't carbon dated it. They haven't found, excavated it to find bone or teeth so they can carbon date. They say it can go back as far as 10,000 years ago oh after the last ice age when the first settlers um, lived along the coast in Ireland. And are those shells secure there? Yeah, these, these have been here a lot longer than we have. Really? Gosh, isn't that fascinating? You get such insight into how people live their lives, don't you? Absolutely. And like... Um, shellfish and seaweed would have been their initial diet, and uh, um, and then fish as they um, watch the spiders make a web. They figured out how to make nets, etc., etc. Oh. But that, they would have evolved to get better at that. But that diet today is the trendy um, paleo diet that they're all they're all going mad for in New York and mm -hmm. in LA mm -hmm. and London. Um, this is what these guys eat. They have no money. Do the different seaweeds have different qualities and different Absolutely. Right across over here and and benefits? I'll show you this guy. This fella here is what kept the monks on skellings alive. What's that one now? This is called um, Gillis Gulishka, the leaf of the water. You can have a, ta a taste of that. Oh my so, god, it's so soft. Gillis um, in, in the south of Ireland and Dulce up north. I thought it didn't taste all seaweedy. <laughs> Palmaria palmata. Um, so th this would be very rich in minerals, vitamins, trace elements. But it was a fantastic source of vitamin C. This is the, the source of omega-3 and omega-6. It doesn't come from cod liver. You get it in cod liver, but it starts in seaweeds. It's the seaweeds that manufacture them. Wow. That was in oh, yeah. So it's gone from the seaweed yeah, into the Yeah, it goes the up pod. the food chain. Because these are all grazed on. Mm -hmm. When the tide comes in, all the shellfish and fish will be um, munching away on all these seaweeds. Mm, it's unbelievably gorgeous. So Mary, I reckon this plant is more important historically um, in Irish history than potato. Because this is what kept the monks on Skelligs and all the other islands alive. It's what kept the, the majority of the population alive that lived around the coast. So it's what the Vikings carried on all their voyages. Um, it allowed them to go west to North America, east to Russia, south to the Mediterranean and open up all those trade routes. They also settled, as you know, Waterford, Cork, Limerick, and Dublin. So they were the, um, this is the plant that allowed them to travel um, with vitamin C, which prevented them getting scurvy. Long before the potato ever hit our shores. A long time before Mr. Raleigh brought the potato to you all. <laughs> Aha, some sea spaghetti. Sea spaghetti? Yeah. Okay. Imantalia elongata. Gosh, we're gonna, we're gonna, great with the names. We're going to give you a bit of this later on, so you can see how it gets its name. Oh yeah, spaghetti yeah, like. just like a little spaghetti. So we're going to cook this first. We're going to cook this for try about that. five minutes, like like pasta. Then you rinse it clear, and then you flavour it with your soy or your lime, oh, whatever brilliant. takes your fancy. Brilliant. Super healthy brown seaweed, sea spaghetti. What other bits have you got here? Um, this one here. Is the most expensive seaweed in the Atlantic. Oh, really? Uh -huh. This is called pepper dulse. Leave on in Irish. That's 
there's Monday, there's Monday, Monday Friday. That's really beautiful to look at, even. Isn't so it? it's a fern-like red seaweed. Yeah. Can I eat this? Yes. Yeah, Chew that now, and it's nicknamed the truffle of the ocean. You should get a, a garlicky, garlicky yeah. truffle. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and look out at that lovely seascape. What to do, what to do, decisions. I leave you to make up your own minds. Chindarla Shadlar, on the Hainyar of Wurm, I was Okwande Hiri, Yoagwiv, I was Kadesh of Snark.